Good morning! It is Father's Day, and I would like to welcome you back to my channel. Today, we are going to be making my version of a hamburger, because what is a better way to celebrate Father's Day than to eat a homemade hamburger? Please stay tuned so that you can watch the recipe. Welcome back. So in order to get started, we need to take a look at three important cuts of beef that we are going to use in this homemade burger. We have round, ribeye, and chuck. Now these three cuts of beef are going to have an entirely different uh, flavor profile, but when combined together are going to create an amazing burger. So we got to chop them up. So in order to chop them up, we're going to use a little bit of Hollywood magic. And we're going to snap our fingers. And voila. We now have cubed meat. Ready to go for the shredder. As we prepare our shredder, we need to understand that shredders and grinders work best when the internal components are completely cold. So we're going to unscrew the front cap. We will remove the die the blade, and the screw. The screw, the blade, and the die are all going to go into the deep freezer. And it's gonna go in the deep freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes to get them nice cold. Once they're nice and cold, we're going to put them back into the grinder and we're going to add the cubed meat slowly and we're gonna push it down with a plunger and we are going to grind the meat any time that you grind meat, this is probably the best way that you can go about grinding it. Burgers taste a whole lot better if it's uh, freshly ground meat, especially meat that you grind at home. You can always use uh, like frozen burger patties if you want, or you can use the preformed patties that you find at the store, which is, which is also fine as well. However, I just find that burgers made with fresh ground beef taste a whole lot better. Now you can use this process with anything from deer, uh, bison, cow, elk, it really doesn't matter. Um, what matters is the flavor profile of your burger when it's said and done. So now that we have our ground meat, I'm going to turn off the grinder and we're going to move on to the next step. As you see here, my hands need to be cleaned to make them sure they're ultra clean. We're going to put on some gloves like so. On the cutting board, I have a patty former. It's a two-part piece. This is going to be used to cook or make up our patties. I have parchment paper. And we have our ground beef. Now, we are not going to add any seasoning to the ground beef. Seasoning comes later. So in order to make the patties, we're going to take some uh, ground beef and we are going to form it up into a ball. Once we have the meat all formed up into a ball, we're gonna place it into the mold and we're gonna push it down around each, uh, uh, each side, get it all in there, nice and round in there. You could put as much or as little beef as you want in here. You can make the burger patties any size that you wish. I'm making two rather large burger patties and two rather small burger patties. So once you have the beef pushed in there, you're now going to take the top part of the burger former. And you're just going to have to push down as hard as you can. And what you're doing is you're compressing the ground beef so that it's more uh, capable of sticking together. Okay, You don't have to add anything to the ground beef. No breadcrumbs, no eggs. We're not making meatballs. We're not making meatloaf. Okay, seasonings come later. All right. Anybody who puts breadcrumbs, eggs, or anything like that into their burger patties, they're not making burger patties, they're making meatloaf. 
So as you can see, this burger patty is fairly thick. It's fairly big. Some people like burger patties that are pretty thick. Some like burger patties that are fairly thin. So I'm going to make two of, uh, two of each. Two thick and two thin. So we have two burger patties that are the same size. And now we're going to make two burger patties that are fairly thin. We're going to repeat this process where we push the meat into the former. We're going to take the plunger and we're going to push it down. And you'll see by adding uh, less meat, we end up with a burger patty that's about half the size of the two first burger patties. Same thing, push down. Once you push down, carefully take it out of the mold. And as you take it out of the mold, you now have a burger patty. And as you can tell just by looking at the video, it is clearly half the size of the two first uh, burger patties. And we're going to repeat the process for our last burger patty. Same thing, we're going to add the meat, push it down, spread it around, push it with the plunger, take it out, and there we have our four burger patties, two thin and two rather large ones. Next, we're going to work on the tomatoes and the red onions. Now, I like red onions on my burgers. Um, they taste great raw, they're really great with burgers, and so, you really can't go wrong with a red onion. You can use really any onion that you want. There's different kinds of onions for different uh, purposes, but I find that red onions work better on burgers. So what we're going to do to prepare the red onion is we're going to peel the outer layer. Once we have the entire outer layer of the onion peeled and cleaned away, then we can work on cutting the onion. So to cut the onion, we're gonna stand the onion up onto its side and we're going to cut off the bottom end. We don't need it. Here you can make your onion slices as thick or as thin as you want. I like to go for a little bit on the uh, thick side with the onion. Now that we have the onions cut, we're going to pull out the fine china. And we are going to place the cut onions onto the paper plate for simply storage. We don't have to get too fancy here. We're going to do the exact same thing with the tomato. We're gonna to turn the tomato onto its side and we're going to cut the ends off because we don't need them. And same thing like the onion, this is where you can make it as thick or as thin as you like. So there we have our tomato slices and we will also place those onto the paper plate now the two ends, we're going to toss those. We don't need them. I have here two leaves of romaine lettuce. This is from my garden. We're just going to clean them and we're going to put them onto the plate. And there we have our basic three toppings, lettuce, onion, and tomato for the burger. Next, we're going to make some burger sauce. So to make some burger sauce, we're going to take a bowl, ketchup, mayonnaise, and a shallot. And what we're going to do is we're going to put equal amounts of ketchup into the bowl with mayonnaise. We'll grab a fork and we'll go ahead and stir this up until it's nice and homogenous. You're going to get a really nice color uh, I really like this burger sauce. It kind of reminds me of the In-N-Out burger sauce back home where I grew up. Um, although it's most likely not the In-N-Out burger sauce. So we're going to stir this up, add a little bit of salt. About a pinch of salt is really all that you need. We're going to mix this up again a little bit more. And then we'll put the bowl off to the side. Once we have a nice good consistency, we'll put the bowl off to the side. And then we will tend to the shallot. Now to cut the shallot, we are going to dice it in the same manner that we would an onion. We are going to cut it long ways between the root and the stem, and we're just going to cut it right in the half. Peel the outer edge of the shallot, cut the, uh, the stem off. 
we're going to make long cuts all the way towards the root. Careful not to go all the way to the root. One horizontal cut all the way across, and then we will begin to dice all the way across. And we will repeat this process for the other half as well of the shallot. Same thing, long cuts towards the root, one cut horizontal, and then we'll dice it down. Now that we have the shallot completely diced up, we're going to scoop it up with the knife, careful not to cut ourselves, and we will pour it right into the sauce. Once we have it all in the sauce, we're going to give it another good mixing until it is completely combined. Once it's completely combined, then we will have our burger sauce. Now this burger sauce is great on burgers, it's great on sandwiches, it's great as a salad dressing as well. It tastes really well. I love it on all of my burgers. I try to make it as much as I can. So now we're going to take our cast iron skillet and we're going to cook some bacon. So we're going to cold start the bacon. That's where you put the bacon in on a, in a cold pan. And we're going to go with one, two, three, four slices of bacon, two slices for each burger. We're going to turn the heat to a medium and we are going to cook the bacon. Now, I personally like cooking bacon in my cast iron skillet because the heat tends to grow up onto the sides of the skillet and cook the bacon a little bit more round. Now, you can cook the bacon as long as you want, whether you want it to be nice crispy or you can have it a little bit darker and almost burnt. You don't want to move the bacon around too much. We want a lot of that bacon grease to stay into the bottom of the pan. So as we're cooking the bacon, we're just going to keep a close eye on it. I tend to like my bacon right on that edge of where it is almost too crispy. So as we're just cooking the bacon here, we're going to flip the bacon uh, probably once. So as we flip the bacon, you'll see it's starting to cook a little bit better as we're getting a lot of the uh, greasy fat out of the, uh, out of the bacon. So once the bacon is completely cooked, we are going to remove the bacon from the pan and we are going to place it onto a paper towel lined plate. This way the paper towel can catch any excess grease drippings that come off of the bacon. Now anytime you take meat out of a hot stove or hot skillet or even off of the uh, grill, if you're cooking it on the grill, it will continue to cook a little bit longer. The only way that you can stop the cooking is by shocking it. Uh, we're not going to be shocking the bacon at all. So now we come to the seasonings. We're going to put a little bit of salt, some freshly ground pepper, and a little bit of olive oil. And we are going to take the seasoned side of the burger down. This is really the only seasonings that you really need on a burger. You don't need to add anything extra. Okay. If you want to add anything extra, you totally can. It's entirely up to you. However, the best burger that you will ever have is one that is just seasoned with salt, pepper, and a little bit of olive oil. Now we're gonna let this cook for about three and a half minutes on each side. And on the unsalted, on the unseasoned side, once we have them in the pan, we're gonna season them with some salt, some freshly ground pepper, a little bit of olive oil, at about three and a half minutes in, we're going to take a spatula and we are going to loosen up the patties and then we will flip the patties. At no time while you are cooking a burger, whether it's in a skillet like such or on a grill, at no time do you ever push down on the patties. Next, we're going to add some slices of American cheese on top. And once the cheese has been melted, about three, three and a half minutes, we will remove the patties from the skillet and we are going to treat the patties like we would a steak. We're gonna move them to a plate and let them rest. You never wanna push down, I cannot stress it enough, you never push down on a burger patty, even if it's on a grill. 
because when you push down on a burger patty, you're really just pushing out all the juices. Now, when you're using freshly grounded meat, meat that you grind yourself when you're making uh, burgers, you can cook the burgers to medium, you can cook them to medium well, you can cook them to medium rare. It's really up to you. So here I have two brioche buns. Brioche buns are probably the best buns you can possibly use for a burger and we are going to place them down, uh, cut side down onto the iron skillet to basically give them a nice toast. Once they are done toasting, we will remove them from the pan and then we can begin the plating process. You can toast the burger buns for however long that you want, whether you want them just lightly toasted or heavily toasted, it's entirely up to you. Now that we have our burger buns done, now we can begin the next process of plating the burger. So to plate the burger, we're going to take the bottom bun, we're going to add our special sauce or burger sauce, and we're just going to spread it around nice and, nice and evenly on the bottom. We'll add the lettuce, always put the lettuce on the bottom. Take the burger patty, and we'll slide the burger patty on top of the lettuce. We'll add our bacon because why not? It's a bacon cheeseburger. Once we have the bacon, we'll add our onions. Add our tomato. And then finally, the top bun, we will put some more of our burger sauce onto the top bun. And then we will place it on top. And ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. Probably the best and probably most expensive burger you could possibly make. This burger is fit for a king such as your dad on a beautiful day like today, which is Father's Day. You can make this burger at any time. Please do not forget to hit that like, hit that subscribe button. I drop videos every week and I look forward to seeing you next week uh, for my next video. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed this video.